This is a story of the East Indies in 1883, when in the calm and beautiful Java seas, there occurred the greatest, most terrifying spectacle nature has ever presented to the sight of man. The islands were accustomed to violent earthquakes and volcanoes, but not to anything like Krakatau. That island, 3,000 feet high, blew in half, exploded with a report heard 5,000 miles away, and set up a tidal wave which drowned 50,000 inhabitants of neighboring islands. About three weeks before that terrible event, an American full-rigged ship was sailing the Java Seas. She was the gerrymander, commanded by a certain Captain Bowl of Boston. Mr. Flint, break out the royals. In this wind, sir? I said break out the royals. Captain Bowl, I feel responsible to the firm of Culver and Adams for the safety of this ship. If those top masts carry away, that pirate will have us. If we don't set the royals, he'll have us anyway. Mr. Flint, whatever you are for Culver and Adams, you're first mate on this ship. Now pass the word and make it quick. Aye, aye, sir. Break out the main royal! The main royal! Mr. Flint? Well, just this, Captain. Why was Pulo Besa on our trail? For the usual reason, I imagine. Doing his job as a pirate, wanted to gather some loot. Is that all, Captain? Yes, that was all. If you weren't an agent for Culver and Adams, I'd throw you off this ship to the sharks. Since I am an agent for Culver and Adams, you'll tolerate me. You can leave now, Mr. Flint. I'd like to remind you, Captain, unless you begin to show a profit in operating this ship within six weeks, you'll be on the beach without a ship. Then you'll be Captain. Is that the idea? I wouldn't object if I were. <laughs> It'd almost be worth it to see you struggling. You're too new at the game to know it, Mr. Flint. But the governors of the Dutch East Indies are not exactly what you'd call encouraging to non-Dutch traders. An American has to be a genius to show a profit in these waters. Well, nevertheless, Culver and Adams expect you to show one and quickly. Boat's ready, sir. Where is he 
going this time of night? I'm sure it has something to do with that letter he got in Macassar. his death in fear and trembling. Very appropriate for a traitor. He's been making too much use of his breath to tell secret tidings to our enemies. Squeeze the rest of it out of him, come. <laughs> you, Captain Bo. You know, I have a little influence with the Dutch. It would be murder. It'll be your word against mine, and I'm a respected trader here. If you killed me, you would never trade again in the Dutch East Indies. You'd very likely hang. You seem to be forgetting, Captain. You are a foreigner here. The dead man is only a native. Yeah. He's only a native. Now, I'd like to give you a little advice. I don't know how much this traitor has told you but you'd be wise to give up your pursuit of the Peter Zoon diamonds. And I warn you that if you cross my trail again, you will end up as your friend did. I'll cross your trail again, Ebenezer. You can count on that. And when I do, you'll pay for this. <laughs> Two. I come to trade. Late night, trading? 
I understand you have a secret cargo. Secret? Nothing secret here. Who are you? I'm Captain Ball, the ship Jeromander. I know a man named Gusty. Secret cargo? Yes. Did you know there's a Dutch East Indies law against slavery? Who shall know about girl? What would I do with it? How much? Very high value. Dancer, Sultan Palace. A hundred guilders. Crazy man. Absolute no less. 700. I cut my neck. Kim Kim too before Captain pay less. 400. Before I sell Kim Kim 400, I cut neck. I finish. I finish. Go ahead. Cut his rope. 600. 450. No more. Crazy man. Stealing. Robbery. All right. I get chest to carry Kim Kim. Men to help. Chang! Take to Dutch gunboat. Give to sentry. Say nothing. Pretty heavy, ain't it? Yeah, probably a dancer girl for the captain. Tangan, Jilan, Tangan. <laughs> Jilan, Tangan? Yeah. What does it mean? Not Malay, is it? <laughs> so you spoke English all the time, huh? Yes. My father was white. A slave girl speaking English like that? I am not a slave girl. I was a dancer. 
You buy me because you like me? Yeah, sure. Sure I like you. That, uh, the bracelet around your ankle. It's a volcano, isn't it? What does it mean? Only a design, a volcano. Kim, Kim. Did you ever hear of a Dutch ship called the Peter Zoon? Was sunk 200 years ago with thousands of diamonds on board? Many times I have heard of a Peter Zoon to her. Everyone knows. In Bali, when I was a small girl. In Banjo Masi. Did you ever hear of an Australian who calls himself Saint Ebenezer? Saint Ebenezer? Yeah. No, too. Can't harm us here on board. Yes? Captain, about the earthquake. Yes, I know about the earthquake. Just a minute. Just Captain. What about the Peters and Diamonds, Captain? Sounds very interesting. So you're out there listening, huh? You know, the shipping line would like to hear about this. So the Dutch authorities. Slavery being a crime in these parts. Come out here. Mr. Flint, I ought to throw you in the brig. But you won't, will you, Captain? You wouldn't do that to a partner. A partner? All right. Our next stop is Bali. As soon as we load cargo. The girl came from Bali. Maybe we can find out something there. Civil War putting out after us off starboard, sir. Yeah, here comes the longboat. Looks like they're gonna board us. I think so, sir. Back to main yards, Mr. Flint. Boarding party in sight. Aye, sir. Mr. Wilson, main yards are back. Is our uh, cargo all secure? Don't worry, Mr. Flint, it will be. Captain Bull? Yes, we're the German men are bound for Bali. They'll warrant to search a ship. Search away, Lieutenant. Don't go, that's him. No luck, Lieutenant. Not yet. What makes you think you'll find this runaway dancing girl aboard the Jeremy? Or do the Dutch just automatically suspect Yankee traders? We are not permitted to disclose the sources of our information or discuss the economic policy of the Netherlands East Indies. You can save yourselves some trouble, Lieutenant. You won't find the girl here. Thank you. We must search in any case. Very well, Captain. We found no trace of the girl. We are sorry we have detained you. Did you do, Captain? Throw overboard? No, but I still hope she doesn't drown. We'll find out as soon as possible. Filled water cask on deck. I haven't had a chance to get her out. Hasn't she made a sound? Not yet. I spoke too soon. Oh, lads, look what we got here. Let's divide her up. <laughs> Not so fast, reader. What's happening here? They have now. We saw the top of the cask move, sir. Yes, sir. You never saw a cask jumping around like that before, sir. So we just opened it up, and there she is. Stowaway, huh? She must be what the Dutchies were looking for. Well, now that she's aboard, we'll treat her like a human being. You better put her ashore, Captain. The boys may want to play cribbies with her. <laughs> <laughs> this girl is our passenger to Bali. She'll take over your quarters, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Flint, take her to his cabin. Aye, right, sir. See that she gets some dry clothes. And you men. If any one of you lays a hand on you, you'll answer to me. Understand that. I like the story he's telling us. Stowe, huh? <laughs> I say he knew she was in there all the time. Stop picking on the lad like that. Or your noggins will be noggin' on the deck like a heathen drum. 
And it's myself telling you what he says is gospel truth. Besides, he wouldn't want to be fooling with a woman that is not on his own blinking ship. <laughs> Aye, there's no money to be got from women. <laughs> <laughs> Shaped like Venus to Milo. <laughs> hey, Hale. Yeah. You think we brought her aboard the chest? Well, I'll be dead. Maybe so. It's too bad, that's all. What's too bad? Just like I once read in a book. Sure says La Femme. It means look out for the lady. She'll get him in trouble yet. You're right. Sure, sure is La Femme. <laughs> Some air. It'll warm your insides. Don't worry about the roustabouts on deck. They won't bother you. They'll just stay below. I don't worry about the men on deck. No, no, you got me wrong. Being captain of a ship is a job to me. When I'm aboard, I work at it. When I'm on leave, I... well, that's different. You drink like the men on deck. I only drink on special occasions. You're a beautiful girl, Kim Kim. You better go to your cabin. And stay off the deck. Come on. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Well, Captain. Did you get any information from her? No, that'll take a little time. Couldn't be that you like her company. Yeah, there's always the devil to pay on a ship when a pretty woman comes aboard. But this time it's necessary. There's a secret in that head of hers. You're gonna want to get at it. Yes. Don't appreciate good hooch. That's made out of palm trees. Beautiful palm trees, my good man. Beautiful like valley dames. <laughs> I think don't go wasting good liquor. <laughs> Kim's on deck. Mr. Reader, he's...
Bring a bosun chair. Put them under ten times. Don't drown them and don't let the sharks get them if you can help it. Aye, aye, sir. I told you to stay off the deck. I'm captain here, and as long as you're on my ship, you'll do as I say. Now get to your cabin and stay there. You'd be wearing it. Looks good on you. Just came to tell you that we stand in at Bali day after tomorrow. We'll do some trading there with the Rajah of Plunk Company. The Rajah? Oh, he mustn't see me. He's a very bad man. I will stay on the ship and hide. Why? I was a dancing girl in his court. Dancing the gong. After the men killed my father, he brought me out from Sonora where I was born. But my mother took me and we ran away. After that, you uh, you went to Banjo Mass? Huh? Yes. Elifish. The sergeant saw me dance and wanted me to dance in his court. One day, mother went out and never came back. No one knew about it, the sergeant said. He came to see me and I ran away from him. But the Chinese man caught me and, and made me a slave. They beat me and, and sold me. Why do I have to tell you this? You don't have to. Just one thing, Kim Kim. Did the Sultan ever mention the Peter Zoon diamonds? Peter Zoon diamonds? No, he never did. You always ask me, Peter Zoon diamonds, Peter Zoon diamonds! You don't like me. You have a cold heart like it about the light. Get out! No, wait a minute, Kim Kim. I... Get out! She's a hot pepper devil. If you didn't go about it in the right way, Captain. Mr. Flint, I don't know what she was angry about. All I've discovered is that she came from Sanur in southern Bali. When we get there, we might turn up something. Maybe you'd like to go up on deck and get a little fresh air. Yes, but... It's all right. I'll stay by you. It is a beautiful day, isn't it? Kim Kim. I didn't get you up here to ask a lot of questions again, but... There's one thing I've got to know. This ring. It's mine. It's yours. They took it from me. Where did you get it? Well, never mind, Mike. Here. You've got it back. Thank you, Tua. It's a volcano, isn't it? The same as the mounting on your ankle bracelet. Well, yes. What does it mean? I don't know. All I can remember, my 
My mother gave it to me in the temple on the, on the mountain. A temple on a mountain? Where? I was a little girl then. How can I remember? Come on, try to think. You, Captain. You only sing of the purest of diamonds. So you can get money. Yes, I want money. I'll tell you why. I went to sea as a cabin boy when I was 10. I was raised with the lash and the whip and the kicks of seamen's boots. When I was 16, I was an able-bodied seaman. I made my living doing pulley hauling on a slippery deck and clawing canvas on a rolling boom in the sky. I lived on hard tack and I slept in a wet, stinking bunk. Then I got to be a ship's officer. I made men move with strength and will and bare knuckles. I drummed some learning into my own unschooled brain. Then I was put in command of my own ship. A beautiful ship, but she isn't really mine. All my life, I've dreamed of owning a ship like this. And now I've got a chance to make that dream come true. And I'm not going to miss that chance. I will try to help you too hard. I will try to remember. Yes. Get a chair for Miss Kimkin from my cabin. And stand by and see if she's all right. No, not yet. What if a Dutch bought us again? I think it's worth the risk. I wouldn't let my personal feelings interfere with my judgment, Captain. Suppose you let me handle this in my way, Mr. Flint. about the ring and the bracelet. My mother gave them to me on the island where there is a temple to Vishnu, the fire god. She told me Vishnu was giving the purest diamonds to keep. Diamonds are sun and fire, same as Vishnu. His island is a fire island, the big volcano. Men are afraid to go there. The high priest, took the diamonds there as an offering. My father took the high priest to the island on his ship. Later, the pirates caught my father. Tried to make him tell. He wouldn't. They hurt him too much, till he died. I'm sorry. This island with a volcano, where is it? We sailed between two big islands to go to the small island where the temple is. Were there any towns near there? Like uh, Surabaya or Batavia? I, I do not remember. But I do remember a big light on a tall house near the fire island. Big light? Kim Kim, did, did the light flash on and off? Was it a, was it a lighthouse, maybe? Yes, lighthouse. Tall like the cliff at Sonora. Maybe white like the moon. I remember a big cross on top. Big cross? Sounds like Sunderlight. Wait, I'll get a drawing in the chart house. Just a readjustment, Captain. A readjustment? Looks like mutiny. When the captain of a vessel becomes mentally unbalanced and unfit for command, according to Admiralty law, the first officer may replace her master. Get out of here, Mr. Flint. Unless you want to end up on the wrong end of a rope. If you give us trouble, Bowl, I know the owners of the line will stand by me. You wouldn't have the guts to use that even if you had a reason. No, wouldn't I? And as for reason, your insanity about this girl would do. Kidnapping her in violation of the laws of the Dutch East Indies. Exposing all of us to the severest penalties for slavery. For a good reason. Good reason. A scheme to find some fantastic sunken treasure. 
So you told the men about the diamonds, huh? Yes, I told them about your trumped-up yarn. About how the girl was supposed to have some information that would lead us to some imaginary diamonds. Mr. Blue, conduct Captain Bold to the brig. Just a minute. I think the crew should know that the diamonds are not imaginary. Just a few minutes ago, the girl confirmed that there is such a treasure. And she gave me the approximate location. Nonsense. Mr. Blue. Mr. Flint, perhaps the captain... No treachery here, Blue. Come on, Captain. And none of your tricks. No tricks, Mr. Flint. Only to offer the crew half the treasure, the half that would have been yours. Do you hear that, lads? It's all right, lads. Get Flint out of here. Throw him in the brig. Aye, aye, sir. Men, you heard me correctly. I'm willing to forget this trouble. And more than that, like I said, I'll give you half the body. We're with you, Captain. All right. Mr. Blue, you'll take Flint's place as first mate. Fortunately for you, good officers are scarce in these parts. Mr. O'Brien will take Mr. Wilson's job as bosun. Mr. Wilson, as of now, you're a plain, able-bodied seaman. See that you live up to the name. The girl remembers the island where the Peter Zoon diamond cache is located. It's between Java and Sumatra, near Sunda Light on Sunda Strait. With her help, we'll get there, and we'll get the diamonds. All right, men, back to your watches. Mr. Blue, set her northwest by north. Aye, aye, sir. I'm afraid. Well, there's nothing to be afraid of now. The fire guard. The diamonds belong to him. I don't think the fire guard will get angry. Anyway, not with you. No, I... I fear for you. The fire guard. He may kill you. The big plow with the black flag.
You offered very little resistance, Captain Bowles. Last time you did quite well with that signal cannon. This time you must have been asleep. What do you want from us? We have no cargo that would interest you. I am informed that you have a cargo which interests me exceedingly. Or rather, a passenger. A seagull or a water rat? A dancer named Kim Kim. Do not try to protect her. My men will find her. Empatarang, Bajumpa, Budak, Parampan, Delam, Kapal. The Dutch Navy will be on your neck for this. The Dutch Navy does not have the slightest idea where my capital city is. In these waters, I do exactly as I wish. Why don't you come out from behind? Silence, uh, dog! I could kill you in a moment if I wished. And all your crew. But I need some information first. I won't tell you anything, Mr. Pulo, or whatever your name is. Your insolence will cause you pain tonight. So, you had no passengers. Now, you men. We did not kill you or your captain because I intend to question you. But we will kill you if you try to escape. So you will quietly do as you are told. You will sail this ship under guard to my harbor. Detang, detang. I think we're coming into Pulo Town. A harbor, anyhow. Dutch have a big reward out of information about this place. You think we can remember where it is? Careful. This part, we understand our lingo. Wait till I check it. You very stupid, huh? Yeah, stupid. <laughs> well, you see what you can, and I will, too. If we get out of this alive. Ready! Ready! Your mate, Mr. Blue, has been very cooperative. So has Mr. Flint, the man you had in your jail. I'm not surprised. I understand you have considerable affection for this ship, so I'm going to permit you to bring it to anchor. I'm sure you don't want anything to happen to your ship. That time! Gentlemen, please be seated. There will be dancing and some arak to drink for my new friends who have so wisely decided to join Pulo Besar.
Release her. Menaila. Dance. Savage, you will pay for this. Come, take her. Ask her where the Peters and Diamonds are. Question her. More, you will bleed for it. where diamonds are. No. Captain Ball will have the diamonds. Then you bleed. she live. I ask about them and she no tell. As usual, you overdid it. I just wanted you to teach her respect for Pullo. No methods didn't work with the mother either. Now take the girl down. Bring her upstairs. I have more intelligent ways of handling her. Dr. seem surprised by the wealth of my surroundings. I happen to enjoy living in the utmost luxury. It is my privilege and my right. What have you done with the girl? It seems that confinement has not broken your power of resistance yet. I said, what have you done with the girl? I suppose you are wondering why I didn't send for you sooner. I thought I might need some information about the Peters and Diamonds. But that will not be necessary now. The Balinese dancer with some uh, treatment has been very cooperative. What do you mean by that? I simply threatened to kill you. And the girl told me everything she had told you about the Peters and Diamonds and promised to lead me to them if I let you live. With this leverage, I am sure she will remember the rest. Such is the power of love. I had almost forgotten what power it had. I'm glad the girl reminded me. But you are a strong, resourceful man. But love, passion, is a weak spot in your armor. I want to see what's behind this. Dirac, Dirac! Ebenezer. You might have been killed for that. You know, Captain, there's a little honor even among hypocrites. Of which, of course, I am an outstanding example. I promised the girl I wouldn't kill you, and I intend to keep that promise. But I am also going to be hypocritical about it. Since you know who I am, I should kill you. But then I have my hypocritical word of honor. So I think I shall simply keep you in prison for the rest of your life. You've got it all figured out. Yes. And if you should fall sick and die during your captivity, that will not be my responsibility. I shall be keeping my promise. And Kim Kim will do as you are because she believed you. You need not worry about your loved one. I will be gentle with her. I learned my lesson in regard to this with another member of her family. Her mother, Bintang. Once she was a beautiful woman. 
But I wanted the secret she knew, the secret of the diamonds. I was too impetuous. Madness came first. You're even lower than I thought. And you were more emotional than I thought. So you see, Captain, I've learned my lesson in regard to force with women. I had good success with this girl, Kim, by being gentle with her. I don't want to hear any more. I'm disappointed in you, Captain. I thought you had more self-control. Incidentally, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Blue, and Mr. Flint have decided to throw in their lot with mine. And they will eventually sail the gerrymander under my flag. Snake! <laughs> <laughs> should be able to sail before sundown. What about the girl? She seems very depressed. Perhaps seeing her mother under the circumstances has upset her. The Americans? They are on the prowl. Good. Kong, I want you to guard the girl carefully. Stay with her at all times. Yes, Lord. You better go now and stand by her door until we're ready to sail. I don't know how to fight with my feet. Don't worry, the clumsier you are, the more interested they'll be. Come on. All right, sir. Come on. Come on.
Ahab, take a party and search the ship. See if there are any more of them left aboard. Secure this mizzen rigging. Mr. O'Brien, you're not my first mate. Take off. Aye, aye, Hey, Rita. Yes. Take the forward watch and set the head sail. Aye. Captain, more of them coming. Grab a rifle. We'll hold them off. We can get underway. Chop that line and save the sail. Turning back. Mr. O'Brien, stand by the whole anchor. Aye, aye, sir. You'll have to keep firing just to be sure they don't change their minds. Good work, lads. How's your ammunition? Only a few rounds left, sir. We may need it later. Sir, I didn't want to mention it, but do you know about that fort? I saw it on that point of land when we came in. Yes, I know. We'll have to pass right under its guns. We can only hope that they don't have word yet that we've broken out. Sir, Ahab and I watched pretty closely when we came through the narrows. We could help. Good. You go aft and stand by the helmsman. Tell Ahab to stand by the bow. Aye, aye, sir. O'Brien, turn two points to the starboard. Right. Two points to the starboard it is. I hope. You think the fort will fire, Captain? Maybe not. Chances are they haven't had word about us yet from the village. It's a long way on foot. I hope the messenger boys are tired, sir. Yeah. He's a cool one. Who, the captain? Yeah. Aye. Except when it comes to that skirt. He only used her to get information about the diamonds. Maybe. He's a tough one when his mind's made up. But I still think he'll be grabbing that thing back. Only if he needs more information about the diamonds, Mr. O'Brien. O'Brien, set her northwest by west. For Batavia, Captain? Is it more trading we're going to do now the girl has gone away? Not Batavia, Mr. O'Brien. Sunda Strait. We'll catch Mr. Pulo there, and then we'll go after the best trade of all, the diamonds. Oh, no. I mean, aye, aye, sir. And Mr. O'Brien, put a work party on the Mizzen Royal and top gallant. Get them mended. Get all the sail on you can. Aye, aye, sir. Captain? Yes, I can see it. A 
but no sign of Polo. Canvas, Mr. O'Brien. Taking sand, Captain. Yes, we'll lie off Mr. Pulo's ship just out of range of his cannons. We'll let him lead us to the diamonds. Rita, send your boys up four max and take in the rolling gallant sails. Aye. What's her fin? Holding the rails! Holding the rails, man! Come here, girl. Don't be afraid. Give me your ankle bracelet, if you please. The crack is Alcavi. No. Don't forget that Captain Bowl is still a prisoner of my palace. You will suffer if you don't obey me. Jerry and Andrew off the starboard quarter. Come, get the girl below quickly. Yes, Master. We can attend to him with cannons. Really, Captain Badada, you know better than that. He won't come within cannon range. He'll simply follow us. We'll never catch him with this ship. Or have you forgotten? Broken sails all restored. Clever work. You must have flown to get here so quickly. Well, Mr. Blue, what do you suggest? You're well acquainted with this man. Well, sir, if we can't catch him or outrun him, I suggest we try to lose him after dark. He don't know the way to those diamonds. Only as far as soon to light. You don't know where that island is the girl keeps talking about, crackety toe or whatever it is. I can rig a spinnaker out of your extra mainsail. Give her a few more knots spade and we can give him the slip tonight. It's a good idea, Mr. Blue. And if you please, tell Kong to keep the girl below decks. Seems a capable man, this Mr. Blue. But utterly untrustworthy. Well, he's useful for the moment. That's more than we can say for the others. As for Wilson, he's fonder of alcoholic spirits than life itself. Would you then propose to lose them overboard, sir? Exactly, all in good time. Ah, Mr. Wilson, we were just speaking of you. I bring a message from Mr. Blue. He wants to know where you keep the extra mainsails. Your Honor, St. Ebenezer, Sir Pulo. Sometimes I just don't know who you are. <laughs> Tell Mr. Blue the sails are in the forward locker. Forward locker? I sir. I don't think he overheard our plans for him. Krakatoa. What a curious name for a volcanic island. It almost sounds like a volcano going off. Well, Captain, let's go to the chart room and map out our course. Pulo has some canvas spread on his forward deck. Looks like he's going to rig an extra sail. <laughs> they'll never sail as fast as Captain Bolt. No, but they'll probably try to lose us after dark. They won't be showing any lights, and there's no moon. We can't bring the gerrymander in close enough to see Pulo's ship. Not without getting blown out of the water, sir. Well, that's right. So we'll follow close with the longboat. I want you to paint the longboat sail black so it won't show. I'll carry a lantern shielded on one side, and I'll lie in close to Pulo and signal you. Aye, aye, sir. All right, that'll be all right. Lower it down and secure it. It's about ready, Captain. It's a funeral boat you got. Black sails at all. I hope not. I'll need a crew, too. You, Chess, and uh, you, Ahab, you've got sharp eyes. Yes, yes sir. sir. Finish the work now. And look sharp for that lantern tonight, Mr. O'Brien. We shove off in five minutes. If we wait any longer, it'll be so dark we'll lose them. Right. Hey, sir. Moving to starboard. Give it one more point to starboard, Governor. What's that? Huh? 
Sounds like somebody's swimming. Yeah. Don't shoot! It's me! Welcome! Keep your eye on the pirate ship, Chess. We don't want to lose her. You don't have to follow Pulu anymore. I know where he's going. If this is a trick, Wilson, I'll... It's no trick, Captain. I swear it. Quickly now, before we lose Mr. Pulo's ship, where is this place? Here. Here it is, Captain. Krakatau. That's the name. Krakatau. It's a little island nobody ever heard of. The girl says the diamonds are there, but she can't remember exactly where. Pulo thinks she'll remember after she gets there. Yeah, here it is, Krakatau, a small volcanic island, also known as Puluapi, Fire Island. The volcano has been dormant for a hundred years. As recently as 1865, earthquakes have shaken the area. This explosive type of volcano is always dangerous. This has got to be it. The girl talked about a fire god guarding the diamonds. That'd be the volcano. <laughs> Mr. O'Brien, set course for Krakatau. Pile on the canvas honor she'll take. Aye, aye, sir. We'll make her fly like a bird. <laughs> uh, Wilson. If you lie to me about this, I'll choke the breath of life out of you with my own two hands. <laughs> Sir, the American, Wilson, has disappeared. Disappeared? Have you searched the ship carefully? Yes, sir. Well, perhaps in his usual intoxication, he slipped off the deck. It's better that way. Saves us the trouble of pushing him over. The main thing is that the horizon to the rear is empty. No sign of our friend Captain Bowl or the gerrymander. Long before we reach this island, Krakatau, we should be in sight of the island now, sir, except for the morning mist. We should have no trouble seeing Krakatau from a distance if the volcano is active. A pillar of smoke. It's not really dangerous. It has never been really dangerous, sir, but it cannot be guaranteed. Well, we'll trust that our good luck will continue. Take Blue and Flint ashore and keep them out of trouble. Of course, I'll take the girl. Captain Ball will have the diamonds. I will not go on the island with you. Oh, yes, you will. The next probably will be closer. Uh, we'll pull away and sneak back in close to shore. Eldrin, stand by to come about. Round up all the rifles and ammunition, Mr. Bram. Aye, aye, sir. dangerous, sir. Possibly. There are more important facts at hand.
where the diamonds must be. We can go up this ridge.
I've been thinking. You remember that thing you said once about, uh, well, about women being able to live on a ship? Yes, yes, I remember. Well, I've been thinking. You, uh, you don't have any family left now, and... Well, like you said, I suppose women could. Kim, Kim, go down and put on your silver sarong and get back up, will you? Please. O'Brien! Assemble the men on the main deck. Aye, aye, sir. And so we lost the diamonds, but we got away with our lives. But there's still a big bounty waiting for us. Pula Bezar is no longer with us, but his town is still there, and so are most of his pirates. And the Dutch are interested to the extent of a hundred thousand guilder reward. Well, <laughs> oh, there's, uh, there's one more thing. I, uh, I wanted to tell you men I'm getting married today. Mr. O'Brien? Aye, aye, sir. gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in the state of holy matrimony. 